Hi, today we are going to talk about non-compliant and compliant balloons. Uh, this is because one of the readers and viewers has asked for it. We will talk about uh, the different aspects of both balloons, compliance, uh, semi-compliant and non-compliant balloons. And we'll talk about a little bit about when to use which balloon in this video. So to begin with, uh, why is it important? Well, compliance of the balloon is the ability of the balloon to expand. How flexible is the balloon? A non-compliant balloon can only expand up to 110% of its size at high pressures. Compliant balloon can expand way more, about 130% of its size. So about 30% um, increase of the normal size. Usually, uh, this is one of the misnomers that uh, we use all the time, including myself. Uh, the inflation device gives you the pressure in PSI. So when you are saying 12 PSI, it is a PSI, it's not atmosphere. As you can see, uh, the atmospheric pressure is much, much lower than PSI. Um, personally, I use heparinized saline with contrast in 50, 50%. A little bit more of the heparinized saline, I would say it's probably like 60% saline and 40% contrast. The reason you want to use that is the more the contrast is in there, the thicker uh, or the more difficult for it is to unwrap, which means and unwrap, which means when you deflate the device, the balloon may not fully uh, deflate, especially the larger balloons like 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, and even larger balloons. Uh, larger balloons like balloon uh, aortic valvuloplasty may even require much more saline, sometimes up to 80% saline and 20% contrast. Especially if you're using Vizipay, which is much thicker contrast, you want to be sure that, <coughs> sorry, that you want to use more saline. Uh, the compliance is a uh, characteristic of the material that the balloon is made up of. As you can see, uh, <clears throat> polyoctanidoyl <clears throat> cocitrate POC <clears throat> is the most compliant uh, stuff, stuff. Polyethylene, nylon, and then the non-compliant balloons are made up of polyethylene treptholate. There are different term terminologies that we use with the balloon. Uh, the word entry means ability to push and cross the lesion. Uh, tracking means how good is it with the guide wires. Some of the balloons, they can get stuck on the, uh, on the wires, especially the FFR, IFR wires. So you have to be careful. I preferably do not use the IFR or FFR wires to put the balloons in because if you lose it, you can get into big time trouble. Um, so be sure that I think one of the safety ways is to not use those wires. Profile is the crossing profile, which means how um, easily you can cross. The word rewrap is used uh, when you can use the balloon again. So you take it out, it's winged balloon, that's the terminology used, and then, uh, you can rewrap it. There's sometimes a rewrapping tool that comes with the balloon, uh, rewrapping tool, which is basically uh, putting the, the stiff wire through the balloon again. And there's a small catheter that, that you can put back on the balloon to make it def and deflate it again. Uh, that way you can use it over and over again. There's some balloons that they say that the rewrapping profile is really good, especially the one made by Terumo. Um, then the word rated burst pressure is used, uh, which means that 99.9% .9 of the balloons will not burst outside the body. Okay, so you remember outside the body. Inside the body, the situation is different. The pressure sy uh, system is different. The vessel may be pressing much more on the balloon. Then there's a word called nominal pressure, pressure at which uh, it reaches at its stated size. So if Rate nominal pressure is six for a balloon. So at six PSI, a 2.5 balloon should reach 2.5 balloon. Again, this is outside the body, not inside the body. 
the situation inside the body is different. So it may not reach 2.5. The vessel may not expand to 2.5. Uh, what is the working range? Range is between nominal and uh, rated burst pressure. What are marker bands? There could be two marker bands or one marker band. Uh, balloons less than 2.0 millimeter size may have just one central marker in the balloon. Okay. And that balloon, um, you know, it's difficult sometimes to see where the balloon's starting, where it's ending, but you can use that central marker band to estimate where it is. The reason for having a single marker band because it makes the profile even smaller. So if you wanna cross a lesion, you wanna take a longer balloon because it tapers on this end and you wanna use it a tapering end uh, balloon or the balloon to get in. So this is just an idea, you know, there are some small balloons, the tip entry, the word entry I mentioned, um, Sapphire currently in US has the, has the smallest entry profile, as you can see, 0 0.0164 uh, profile. And much of that is basically uh, wire, right? 0 0.014 is the wire. So Tikuro, Emerge, apparently Tikuru has really good rewrap, but again, it is 1.5. We do not have a size smaller than 1.5. Uh, Emerge has a smaller version, 1.2. Sprinter Legend is 1.25. Mini Trek is 1.2. Uh, over the wire is a little, uh, a little larger uh, profile. And these are the different crossing profiles. So it, it would cross through a 0 0.0216 uh, region. Uh, as you can see, uh, and I'll talk about that maybe in a separate video, the smaller balloons. So where do you use the semi-compliant balloon? I, I have been asked this multiple times, this question. So personally, it's my practice that I use it for pre-dilatation in acute MI patients. And some people like to use 2.0 balloons. Some people like to use 2.5. I'm more in a 2.5 uh, region. But remember, the larger the balloon you're using, the more chances that it will call, cause distal embolization of the thrombus because it's like a paste. So when you expand it, it will cause the thrombus to move forwards. So I'm very proactive in using thrombectomy, although I do not use routinely, but uh, I try to limit any thrombus, uh, thromboembolism. The 2.0, the issue with 2.0 is that sometimes it may not, cause adequate dilatation and the flow may not get established. 2.5 definitely most of the times gets the flow established. So it's it's a it's it's a interplay between that, you know, you have to balance the risks and benefits. If you want to assess the size of the vessel at low pressures, I can tell you if any balloon around six atmosphere will not cause perforation. Okay. It can start causing perforation around eight atmosphere if you're really oversized. And if you go up to, uh, let's say 12 to 18, moderate risk of perforation, but definitely above 18, the risk of perforation shoots up uh, in the vessel. So even if you're not right about the sizing, you can you just stay at like six atmosphere. Most balloons, I think 99.9% .9 of the balloons would expand completely at six atmosphere. They should achieve like expansion, uniform expansion. Now, you can use it for post dilating a stent, which is not fully well opposed. Uh, you know, most of the people use non compliant balloon. However, if let's say there's a vessel, um, let's see, I'm going to make it a black vessel. Somebody said I'm not using two different colors. So this is the vessel, endothelium, and the stent, let's make it green, is like this. Okay, it's not fully expanded. So you do not need an NC balloon to expand that. You can just use a semi-compliant or compliant balloon to expand it uh, to get it to the endothelium. Okay. You can use it for side branch dilatation. Like if, um, let's say you have a stent in place and make that a vessel. Okay. And 
in that case, it's difficult sometimes for an NC balloon to cross this. I use a compliant balloon like a 1.0 or 1.5 to open the struts up first. Once the struts are open, then you can use the NC balloon to do the kissing balloon inflation. Also in semi-inflated kissing balloon inflation, what that means is that uh, sometimes some people use a balloon just to preserve the side branch. They keep a balloon here, okay? like it's compressed outside of the stent and inflate the stent and the balloon together. <clears throat> so there is no uh, side branch uh, collapse and the carina stays in the middle. For that, I don't use the NC balloon. I use a semi-compliant balloon because it's easier to pull behind the struts of the stent. Slide. So how do you place the balloon? Okay, so let's talk about that. So personally, what I do is, so let's see if this is the vessel. Okay. And the vessel has a lesion. Okay, something like this. What I do is I put the balloon a little bit on this side, like this. So, so you'll have markers, okay, that are hanging on this side. So I wanna start a little bit distal first and then slowly maybe do two inflations before uh, pulling the balloon out, okay? I wanna use, most of the times I'm using a 12 uh, millimeter or a 15 millimeter balloon. And if it is a long diffuse lesion, I can even use 30 millimeter balloon so that less amount of inflations are needed to be done. So you have to adjust the size depending on the length of the lesion. And don't get worried about using longer balloons. Now in acute MI, you wanna use a shorter balloon. I tend not to use eight atmosphere balloons for pre-dilatation. The reason for not using eight atmosphere because it can, um, it can move uh, what we call as uh, melon seeding of the balloon. It can slip. The slipping is a big problem. This is for semi-compliant or compliant balloon. As for the, the non-compliant balloon, there have been multiple studies done in comparison, um, and it has been found you want to use non-compliant balloon in every case, almost every case, because it has found that it increases the uh, stent expansion at the end. So you can use a compliant balloon first, then put a stent and then use a non-compliant balloon. Or if it is very calcified lesion and it's calcified lesion, you wanna check its uh, ability to expand, you can use the compliant balloon first, uh, sorry, non-compliant balloon first to expand it. And the reason for that is the compliant or the semi-compliant balloon has higher risk of um, perforation also it may unevenly expand the lesion. So if it is like calcium here, uh, let's make it green. Okay, calcium, there's a calcific nodule in the vessel and you are expanding the balloon. Okay, the balloon may expand like this, dog bone. Okay, so it may not be able to expand, but because if you're increasing the pressure, it may cause perforation or, um, you know, perforation into the vest, out of, out of the vessel, or there could be a hole in the balloon that can be formed. So you want to use a compliant balloon. Also for kissing balloon inflations, I prefer using non-compliant balloon uh, around 12 atmosphere or something like that. Again, post dilatation at a stent, which is not well expanded, you want to expand the vessel, okay? So you want to use the non-compliant balloon to expand the stent as well as the vessel at the end of the procedure. I did not mention the balloon sizing earlier, but you can balloon size um, as well. So how do I place this? So usually I use it inside the stent, the non-compliant balloon. So let's say if this is the vessel, I've been making all the stents green. 
you want to use a little bit higher magnification. Okay, magnify a little bit more. Look at the stent. You can use clear stent or, you know, the stent boost or sync vision, whatever you have. Uh, sync vision, stent boost. Or some people just use dry cine. And make sure, I tend not to expand the very distal end, but you can look at if it looks at unexpanded on these. You can start dilating the stent from here. Now, if you have a long stent, you better use two different sizes of balloons. So different balloon NC for the distal end, and you're sizing it based on, you look at the expansion of the balloon, and you're looking at the blood vessel, how big the blood vessel is, and it should match. There should be a little bit of step down. Okay, what is the step down? Your stent may look like a little bit more expanded on this end. Okay, All right on this side, and there should be like something like this. The vessel may look like over expanded a little bit. That's the proper expansion. Okay, the vessel should look something like this. Okay, and then you use a different balloon. Personally, anything more than 15, uh, sorry, 20 millimeter, I'm using two, two balloons. Now, it is expensive. If you don't have enough balloons, then you can use the same balloon, pull it back, and go at a higher um, pressure, like 18 atmosphere instead of 12 or 6 atmosphere. You can do that over here. Uh, so you can be creative about that. Uh, and you want to make sure that the balloon is not in the vessel while doing this, okay? So the reason for that is you can cause either distal dissections or the proximal dissections because of that, okay? Now, this is just to give you an idea how does the balloon look like. Um, this is the balloon, this is wrapped here, there's the margin of this, what we call this shoulder. As you can see, the shoulders also expand, as you can see, okay? Now, if you oversize the balloon, this can actually cause dissection because it may expand till here like this. So make sure that this marker is inside. Now, these markers may be inside the stent in some of the cases, especially I think the Abbott stents have the markers right here. Please don't quote me on that. Um, so make sure, uh, I know, Boston Scientific Synergy, they're outside. Onyx, they're outside, okay? So Zion's uh, group, I think they're inside of that. So make sure you know where the stent uh, markers are because the stent, especially when you are doing the, trying to do the osteal nailing, which I prefer not to do, you may miss the osteum if you're just using the markers. As you can see, see there's a little bit of difference. And the larger you expand it, the more foreshortening it would be. So the stent may become shorter in size. So be careful about that. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, if you have any other questions, I have, I'll probably make another video for balloon complications and the speciality balloons. There are several of these. Uh, I think there's a ninth one, which is, you know, uh, re-entry balloons, speciality balloon, would that, would that be included? So let me know if you want to listen to other uh, videos. Please subscribe and let me keep on letting me know if you want more videos. Thank you so much for watching today.